Hey yo, what's up? It's the time. We're doing this. We're doing this shit. We're doing it. We're doing everything. We're doing all the stuff this week right here on twitch.tv slash Tommy PQM. I forgot right, to move my really chair again. Video. What? It's Mitskiff, what the fuck are you doing here? What you doing on the autoplay, bro? Get out of here. Get out of here. Nobody get yeah, nobody wants you here. Nobody wants you here, chair. And why do I just hear a cat meowing in the hallway? Oh my god, dude. I swear to god. My brain is not is not where it needs to be this week. <laughs> I'ma be honest, dude. This has definitely been a very off week for me. I've been struggling a lot to exist this week for a number of reasons for one i have a canker sore in my mouth and whenever that happens my entire uh state of existence just like suffers because like i don't we've all had canker sores i think and i'm saying canker sore don't get that confused with cold sores listen it's different because that a cold sore is on the outside of your mouth. That's herpes. Whenever I say I have a canker sore, people are like, oh, so herpes. I'm like, no. <laughs> a canker sore is just any open sore on the inside of your mouth. And as a result, everything hurts. Just talking right now is painful. And it's annoying because it's because I went to the dentist last week. And they just went fucking sicko mode on my mouth trying to like clean it out with the with the thing you know the metal thing they're just like scraping like crazy and i was like do you really is, is that really necessary they're just going ham on that they were going mobamba in there they were going on name another uh rap song <laughs> name another rap song known for uh being played in the club they were going uh t-pain songs bro i still hate that i still hate that about detroit detroit the detroit club scene actually made me not like t-pain anymore not dislike him but like i think t-pain is a revolutionary in music i think he's often underappreciated but listen that doesn't mean that every single song you play at the club has to be a t-pain a t-pain song that's not necessary. If anything, it oversaturates the entire experience. I don't need to hear T-Pain every single song. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, let's, you know, it's and that's like, all right, we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. Here's Usher. Like, come on, bro, it's 2020, or at least it was back then. Dog, my mental health has been on, hasn't been on. It's been on the up and up lately. But goddamn, it was really on a decline right before COVID started. And then, like, COVID hit, and, it, like, it was already going down. Because I was hanging around people who I didn't need to be hanging around with, to be honest, anymore at that point in time. It was really no longer necessary. It was past the point of the expiration date. But you know what happens. You start, you become an adult, and it becomes difficult to become friends with people. Anyways, what am I talking about? Okay, yeah, so I'm having an off week. Part of it was the thing in my mouth and yes i did take advil on stream or no not advil i'm allergic to advil this is tylenol acetaminophen which is tylenol i'm allergic to advil can't be taking that 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 won't help that won't help my mouth it just makes my mouth swell up anyways i've been playing a lot of wow this past week maybe that's why i'm having an off week but it's also like for one, the canker sore, because that always fucks me up, especially when it's like, I need to do things that require me talking, like this right now. And it's like, do I really want to be talking if every time I talk, it hurts? The answer is no, I don't want to. But I also want to do this, even if it's going to be painful, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it makes me not want to do this as much as I would rather be just like, doing something on my own, just like, trying to relax and like deal with the facts that i'm in pain but also this is important i should probably put on a necklace 
I'm also very tired. Yeah, like, listen, bro, my, my brain is just soup this week. This is a soup brain week. Some some weeks, sometimes your brain is just going to be soup. It's just not going to work the way it normally would. And that's this week. That's what's going on now. Is this is a soup week? I didn't even grab my list. I got to do that. I was like, yo, dude, how is it already 930? I need to start putting the show together and putting everything together for the show. Let's see. Where's my list? You gotta get my lists for the wheel. But before that, I gotta acknowledge. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Trying to lose weight still is, like, making my brain... Yeah, it's starting to hit me. <laughs> like, it, it's weird. Okay, I, I've talked about this a little bit before. So, losing weight isn't difficult. It's just miserable. Like, it's not hard to not eat. Like, that's not hard. It's not It's not like a difficult thing to do. It's not a difficult thing to reduce your calories. That's It's pretty easy, but it's, like, not enjoyable. It's not ideal. It's not a comfortable experience. <laughs> so, I was actually getting to the point where it's, like, I mean, I'm around, like, the, the body fat percentage right now where it's, like, okay, my body's, like, this is pretty low for us. We're not used to this. I was kind of sticking there for a while. So I had to kind of like go lower with my calories. I'm just going to ramble for a while. Just so y'all know. This is Twitch and that's kind of what the platform is for. Is for, you know, narcissists like me who want people to watch us to just listen to us ramble for a while. So there are a lot of people out there who are like specialists. People who uh, talk about fitness and talking about in the stick in your mouth bazinga <laughs> why did i say bazinga blammo but yeah there are people who like specialize in um or supposedly they specialize it's a lot of people who are like amateurs because listen fitness in the modern day is literally just a bunch of people who have an instagram following and they're like i can charge people for fitness advice because i'm in shape even though like my genetics and my needs are different than the people who are going to be looking to pay people for help, you know? So I can just kind of be like, well, I do this, and I do that. And here's, like, a fucking cookie car diet plan and workout plan that's probably not even gonna... probably not even gonna help you. I mean, it might. But yeah, that's just kind of the state of fitness at this point. But a lot of people would be like, it's just, you know, a matter of just, uh... What, what what what's the big deal you know just uh where's the wheel where's the wheel numbers here it is it's just a matter of you know willpower or whatever and i think that's kind of dumb and i think it's especially dumb how people are like oh it's bad to have like an emotional connection to eating food and i think that's dumb because listen there aren't many things in this world that are worth living for there's it, it can be difficult to find things that give you joy. <laughs> like, I can find joy in a number of things, as you can see, throughout my life. But listen, one of the things that is very consistent for a lot of people in making them happy is food. And I think that being like, oh, you need to like just, you know, whoop and like remove that from your brain. I think that's really unhealthy because you can't do that. Th that. That doesn't happen. You can repress it. And that's unhealthy. <laughs> like, it's not going to make it go away. It's just, if anything, it's going to make it worse. You know, you need to actually acknowledge that part of you that enjoys eating and just, like, manage that in a healthy way. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Because, listen, there's two types of people in the world. There's people who eat to live and people who live to eat. People who do not enjoy food, who find it very easy to diet. They find it very easy to be like, oh, yeah, no, just eat... You know, plain chicken breast. Just straight up unseasoned chicken breast. Um, and just vegetables. Probably not even vegetables. Just eat, just eat straight up chicken breast. Just eat chicken breast and like a, a, a spoonful of rice. And you're good, you know? <laughs> like people who are like, oh yeah, no, like the, there's like specific foods. Yeah, eat like whatever. Just like no seasoning. None of that. And you'll be fine, you know? 
like because that's that's what it comes down to and it's like they're just like yeah no like why would you why would you want to like cheat on your diet why would you like you know need a cheat day like just don't eat the food that's bad and eat the food that's good because like in their brain it just doesn't you know it's like a entirely separate worldview whereas for the rest of us it's like you know it does take like a mental toll if after a long time it's like oh yeah i haven't eaten this thing that i actually like crave and releases positive chemicals in my brain when i eat it you know so there's that I think I'm kind of at that point, because I'm like, damn, dude, like, I've not had, like, a proper cheat day. Like, I've had days where it's like, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm going to eat something that I probably shouldn't, but it still stays within my calories, you know? I haven't had a proper day where I, like, go into, like, a caloric surplus for a while, and I think that's starting to mess with my brain a bit, and also, like, that with, like... A bunch of other stuff this week caused me to not be as productive as I wanted to be. And that is why there was no upload on Sugma Mail this week. Usually I would edit out a uh, segment from the stream for that week and post it as its own video. At least one, usually two, sometimes two, sometimes even three. I'll edit down a section of the stream from the past week and post it on there i didn't do that this week for one because i was having a bit of an off week wasn't really as productive as i wanted to be regardless i have a whole video i need to shoot next week that i was meaning to shoot all week this week but you know things just didn't line up also like this i i was like it was really bad like a, a day or two like yesterday and the day before where i was like I don't think I can shoot a video that's going to take, like, an hour to shoot and then, like, whatever else. Like, I don't think I can do that when I got this in my mouth, making it difficult to talk. You know, canker sores are actually the worst. I had a period of time where I was drinking orange juice every day. Like, I would go up to uh, the Walgreens at the corner and drink an orange juice every single day. Why? I don't know. I think I got into a habit because I was doing that when I had bronchitis like two years ago. And like, I was doing that for like a year. I'm like, why do I keep getting canker sores in my mouth? Like it, it, it was like too often. I'm like, this is for one, my brain does not work when I have something like that, where it's just like painful in my, like, like a constant pain where it's not like, oh my God, this is excruciating. <laughs> it's not like, oh, this is excruciating. And like, it's like, it's just, like, enough to where it's annoying, you know? Like, it's not painful enough to where it's, like, oh, my God, like, I'm just, like, totally miserable. But it's, like, I'm miserable enough that it's, like, come on, dude. Really? Like, you become more irritable. You become more, like, just your patience and your threshold for everything just decreases. And that's kind of where I was at on top of, like, I also had, like, a weird thing where I couldn't sleep. For like a couple days which isn't fun that's how uh this which is regrowing now like this that patch there that's how that started because i couldn't sleep for a while so yeah anyways that's kind of part of why there wasn't a video this week that's number one and reason number two is i'm kind of brainstorming and thinking maybe i should do those videos less often I think I'm going to save those videos specifically for when I have a segment that I think will make a very good standalone YouTube video if I edit it down specifically for YouTube. And otherwise, I think like interviews and stuff, I should just segment out without a ton of editing and just post that on the Tommy PQM channel where it's going to get more views because there's more subs there, you know? I think that's what I'm going to do from now on. And I think that's what I'm going to do with the Artiste video or Artiste interview from last week. I'll probably do that this week. And I'll probably also post the one for Cashed tonight. And then I'll probably also, I'll, I'll do it. Like there are some interviews where I'm like, nah, this is more content or like more like guest segments. Like the Tom Holland thing. I'm like, that's a good video for Sugma Mail. Same thing with the boys night thing. <laughs> like, 
I feel like those are better as like standalone videos. But like, you know, the interview with Artiste, the one with Data Dave, the one with Sky, the one with Cash, I predict will probably be similar where it's like I feel like that's kind of more podcast type interviews where it's not so much like it doesn't really fit that style of content if you know what I mean so there's that that's that's kind of what my game plan is and also like I'm gonna be honest right now I don't have a guest for next week and that's not really something that like I'm upset about that's not something where I'm like god damn like I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm thinking next week we're going to do more of a chill laid back stream. I'm thinking we're going to do something. We're just going to do like a fun thing. We might even game. I don't know. Um, it's still going to be a late night segment program. But I'm thinking honestly like I'm thinking because I want to do like that exploration into the Casey Neistat stuff like I said. And I feel like that's a good video. And that'll be a good video for Sugma Mail. But I think it would probably be good to most like do that as like a live segment and then edit it into a proper video. So I think we'll do that next week because I don't want to do that type of a thing when we have a guest because I feel like it'll take too long. And I feel like it'll be kind of weird going from that into a, you know, interview, you know, you know. You know, anyways, so let's talk about me closing the window. You know what we need to do. We're not even going by the bell anymore. I'm taking control into my own hands. Now, we're just going to do the wheel when I feel like it's time to do the wheel. I think it's time to do the wheel. Don't show that. All right, we're doing the wheel. Nineteen. Draw Bart Simpson. All right. Okay. Let's see how we're gonna do this. No, let's just do it on here. Draw Bart Simpson. Gotta do the head. He has an ear. Oh, you know what? I could actually um. Wait, hold on. Will this work? Hold on. I just had an idea. What if I do it like this? Can y'all see this? Yeah, we can do it like that. All right, and the Simpsons, they all have the titty eyes, where you draw titties and that's their eyes. Twitch, don't ban me. The titty eyes. And then Bart has like a pointed nose, but not too pointy. And then let's see. Fork here. Let's just fill that in a little bit more. Let's see, am I missing anything? Well, I mean, they kind of have like sort of eyebrows. I don't know, that's Bart. Bart Simpson. Yo, why doesn't Bart have a hairline? Why do they why do they not have hairlines? That's crazy. Let's just draw Homer over here. Yeah, draw Homer. Gotta draw Homer. You can't even see that, can you? Nope, you can't. Titty eyes. That's what they do. That's how they base the. That's that was. I think that's actually what they base the. They were actually like, yo, let's just make their eyes look like titties. Homer. You gotta draw Homer. He's got the M there. He's got the. And he's like. Bort. There you go. If I ever made an OnlyFans, this is what I'd put on there. Stuff like this. Why do I have such an... I, I have, like, such a large audience of gay men. And I don't have an issue with that. Of course. Like, why would I? But... Why? <laughs> it's just something I don't understand. Like, is it because I post first traps on uh i'm super late don't worry about it bro the fact that you showed up is all that matters um 
Is it because I post first traps on Instagram? Is that it? Is it because I made the one video about gay representation in cartoons and now they're all like, all right, this is our guy. <laughs> is it that easy? I mean, I don't have an issue with it, but I don't understand it at the same time. I mean, I feel like Sugma Male and like the whole idea behind it is to what I miss. I mostly just rambled for a while and then I drew Bart Simpson, so you didn't really miss that much. And Ron DeSantis does hate gays. But also, like, I, 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 st <laughs> I don't know why. I somehow ended up with a bunch of gay men in my audience. I mean, Sugma Male ultimately is about, like, kind of accepting masculinity for what it is. And in my opinion, I think, like, masculinity is pretty gay. So I guess it kind of makes sense in that regard. I don't have an issue with it. I'm, I'm just confused by it. Like, I legit have, like, a ton of gay dudes who are just, like, in my audience. Sometimes I literally will go on, like, I'll look at people's, like... I'll sometimes look at people's profiles and look at who they follow and they don't follow like the round table or anything they don't like anything animation related they're literally just like I'm just like how did you even find me so that's kind of something I don't I, I want to understand from like an analytical perspective of like a creator who has analytics like I kind of want to understand that but you know what I don't know it, it be what it be I'm not going to complain. I also think that just, like, that's partly just the community that I'm exposed to. Like, listen, dog. <laughs> listen, here's the thing. All right, so being the round table, right, we are a big YouTube channel, over a million subscribers, woohoo. Being in, like, metro Detroit, being in, like, suburban southeast Michigan, that's kind of a big deal. Like, you, we talk to people in our social life like normies and they're like oh my god that's crazy and there are genuinely people that like we've known or like we've come across that like think like oh yeah like y'all are getting plenty of like women off that meanwhile it's like dude <laughs> if i go to a convention most of the women i meet who are like oh my god i love the round table nine times out of ten they're gay like straight up nine times out of ten they're lesbians and the other one out of 10 times they're maybe like probably pansexual or something like it's not a situation where it's like a prime you know <laughs> like it, it's we have a very specific audience and i think that's just kind of animation in general because it's like there's two sides to like nerdy stuff in general i feel like it's usually there's a side that is like super neckbeard far right low-key neo-nazi sometimes even like race realism and that type of stuff where they're just like super misogynist and all this stuff super conservative and even if they aren't like outright about it and then you have the other side that's just like tankies and like a lot of marginalized groups people of color lgbt women and a lot of them are involved in multiple of like it's like a venn diagram and there's a very large center there and it's like we're on that side <laughs> we're on the side with all the marginalized groups because we decided hey we're not going to go that mr anna route of just being super reactionary like that quartering route of like doing that type of stuff we're gonna be cool we're gonna be the cool guys or at least our definition of cool which is accepting people regardless of their identities and all that stuff when I used to go to Defiance College, one guy told me in Defiance, Ohio, there's so many lesbians. Ohio, I try not to go to. <laughs> I'm super worried about how the GOP are just gonna getting everything their way and no one is going hard against them. I mean, we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute. I mean, that's kind of like, I, I'm, I don't actually know how I want to go about talking about politics on in my content because I'm gonna be honest. Number one, sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's not worth it to just, like, be talking about politics online because it's like you end up getting all these weirdos who are like, I'm going to send you death threats, and I'm going to dox you, and I'm going to do all that shit, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. At least not right now. <laughs> but also, number two, I feel like 
the thing about Hassan existing online is 99% of what I'm going to say, Hassan is going to say the exact same thing, and he's much better at talking about that stuff in a public platform. So I'm kind of like, is it really necessary for me to talk about this stuff? Like, there's someone already doing that, you know? Enter trending for that take made me feel like I was streaming, Jesus fuck. Yeah, that take, but also, like, his weird, like, anti-mask, like, pro-Trump stuff. Was he pro-Trump? I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. That homie is pretty irrelevant. But, you know what? You know what? I managed to somehow talk to this point where, um, I don't feel like I need to really talk too much about. Honestly, of course, Roe v. Wade being overturned bad. That's the most important thing. Also, uh, you know, I don't know, watch Hassan. Me and Hassan have, like, 99% of the same takes. Not even because I watch Hassan. Literally, like, I when I found Hassan, like, most people start watching Hassan. They're like, yeah, he, he de-radicalized me. He showed me the way. Like, he shaped my ideology politically. I'm like, I already had that ideology when I found Hassan. I just like him because, literally, for one, he shares a lot of my perspectives, and two... I think he's cool, and I think he does a really good job of translating those perspectives into a way that is digestible for most people. So there's that. And I'm also not one of those people who's like, actually, I'm like way far for left than Hassan. I'm, 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 I'm super. I'm, I'm, I'm like, dude, Hassan is like not even doing anything. Like, bro, I'm. You should be supporting my Patreon. You know, Hassan did nothing wrong. He, he really doesn't. <laughs> and honestly, here's one thing I want to do is I actually do. You know, since I made a video about Pokemon, I think that the the floodgates are open to just make a video about Hassan and specifically in the realm of the way that people have decided that socialism has to be a poverty cult and that's the only way that socialism can exist when in reality, you know, I support socialism because I think people shouldn't be poor. I think they shouldn't have to worry about, you know, are they going to be able to eat? I think that there are certain things that society should just like provide as a baseline at the minimum like food shelter clothing stuff like that like you shouldn't have to worry about that you know despite how long this week has been i do hope you have a good weekend i am going to take this weekend pretty easy i think because yeah i i'm trying to focus on not working at least certain blocks of time because the thing is, is especially working from home, we don't have an office anymore. So it's like we, uh, like, oh my God, my brain is not working this week. Um, not having the office anymore and like working from home, especially since like we're on different parts of the country right now. Um, also got to deal with that. Also got, uh, got to, you know, start working on <laughs> as soon as, uh, as soon as um the season is over and as soon as Momocon's over, all that stuff, I really gotta buckle down and start moving out west. So, you know, but like it, it's been really kind of difficult to find that work life balance when it's like I work on the same computer that I play WoW on, that I watch One Piece on, that I do all that stuff on, and like in the same place, in the same room, and all that stuff. And that's probably not gonna change. <laughs> So it's, you know, you're, you're advised not to do that, but also like, I feel like it's important for me to just adapt to being able to do that. And also like, it forces me to go outside a lot more. So yeah, I'm, pl I'm, I'm planning on going outside tomorrow at least, and like probably go out and do some stuff safely. Of course, don't want to get COVID because a ton of people are getting COVID right now who did not get COVID before. There are a lot of people, you know, so you want to be careful. But I, I want to go out and do some stuff safely, of course, tomorrow, just to kind of, like, decompress from the week. Anyways, um, can't believe that we were saved from this. I need your money to kill babies by abortion. You, taxpayer, give me your money to pay for baby killing. No! I don't believe in abortion! I don't care! Render to Caesar what is Caesar's! Give me money to kill babies! All right, all right, I'll pay you! Give don't me hit me money. anymore! Please, please! Kill this is my so baby. fucked up! Kill my baby! You! 
Can't believe this Kill is America. Damn, I can't believe Joe Rogan did that. Anyway, so what are we talking about? You should try sunbathing if it gets warm outside. I mean, the sun hasn't been out. The sun has been out very far and few between this uh this spring. Which is also why I'm still usually by this point in the year I would be much darker. But the sun hasn't come out. I haven't my melanin hasn't been able to fully activate the way it usually would, so I'm much paler than I usually would be. What <laughs> that caught me off guard, bro. That was just that was the tea party. Bro, honestly, the tea party was content. I, I can't lie. Bro, honestly, I love I genuinely love this whole this whole account is just comedy gold. Oh shit, speaking of Hassan. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, all right. <laughs> this whole account is just fucking gold, dude. This is just <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyways, I said we we're gonna talk about uh, I said we we're gonna talk about animation. What the fuck? What happened to my bro? Did my mouse just die? Oh, yep. I think my mouse is dead. Whip. Whoops. All right. Anyways, let's talk about amphibia. So tonight, or tomorrow? Tonight. Tomorrow. Tonight. Tomorrow. Tonight. Amphibia is ending. Uh. Yeah. Woo. Sad mixed emotions very sweet yes um amphibious ending and of course with amphibia ending i i don't know how to use trackpad oh my god uh i watched last week's episode i've been loosely keeping up i usually don't watch owl house and amphibia the day they come out i usually watch them the week they come out because i am slow also i've been watching one piece a lot so that's kind of taking priority a little bit and then i'll watch in between and i honestly really appreciate this past episode talking about marcy and talking about the relationship between marcy and sasha and Anne, and how they never really took an in they they never really uh what's the word they kind of brushed off her interests and I personally, I liked that story. I liked addressing that. And how, you know, maybe they should have shown a little more interest in whatever. And how maybe Marcy just didn't feel like she fit in with her friends. And of course the internet, as it does. From what I understand, from what I saw, a lot of people were just like, going ham, being like, yo... Marcy is still an awful person, and it's really weird. I'm really tired of every single, every single conversation that we talk about. Oh yeah, my mouse is dead. Every single conversation where we talk about how being every character either has to be like a perfect cinnamon roll angel, whatever, or they're just an awful evil person that deserves to be treated poorly or whatever fuck like homie i beg some of y'all to just go outside like i beg y'all to go outside not only touch grass but maybe talk to another person because i think that you judging these characters as entirely black and black and white ignoring that they're uh ignoring the fact that people are nuanced and have different characteristics different all this stuff they have strengths they have weaknesses they have virtues they have demons everyone is fighting their own fight and dealing with things in the best way they possibly can and sometimes it's not always perfect people are hating marcy i'm genuinely surprised i haven't heard that discourse but also not surprised people are bad faithing marty does marcy does show some autistic traits and i get how she felt when she explains and talks about her favorite stuff and neither of her friends gave her much attention and Marcy is just a kid. Yes, Marcy is just a kid. Um, Leah from Toon Ruins, she actually did a thread on this, and I think she deleted it. But um, it is a really weird thing 
where people in fandoms, especially in the cartoon community, especially in animation, they want to just go in and really kind of bandwagon specific actions and be like, yeah, this week we hate Lilith. Uh, this week Lilith did something kind of quirky and, you know, fun and, you know, relatable. So we don't hate her anymore. <laughs> it's like, uh, I kind of tweeted, I, I kind of subtweeted about this a little bit. Because <laughs> I saw some people were bringing up the, uh, wait, where is it? Yeah, people were bringing up, like, how people reacted to Rose Quartz and Pink Diamond being like, yeah, no, like, fuck all that shit. People were, uh, people were saying that she was an awful person and, like, hating her. And I'm like, okay, I'm somewhat responsible for that. If not entirely responsible for that. Because, listen, I was the first person who was like, yo, I'm, Rose Quartz is not passing the vibe check for me. She is really giving off a lot of toxic traits in my eyes. And I was like, nobody's really acknowledging this. So I'll acknowledge it. I'll be the one to, uh, I'll be the one to say the unpopular thing. And lo and behold, it actually paid off for me because I was actually kind of right in the long term. But also the more important thing is I had to point out the fact that Rose Quartz and the Rose Quartz rants were never a criticism of Steven Universe. Breaking down why a character isn't a great person shouldn't mean that you think they're written wrong. And what made Rose Quartz unlikable also motivated her actions, though it set up the entire narrative of the show. And that's the main thing is... This isn't so much with Amphibia, but I've been seeing this with the Owl House, where people are starting to look at the Emperor and Velos and look at, like, the actions of certain characters and trying to say, like, they are problematic and therefore Dana Terrace is problematic. And that is fucking deranged. I hope that everybody here knows that. Um, I mean, I'm sure everyone here knows that. When you got the attention for saying unpopular opinion is a W for me, I mean, true. But, like, I hope that people looking in can see, like, this is insane. And one thing I saw was kind of, like, I'm trying not to be too specific. But I saw someone trying to claim that, like, Dana Terrace making a point to omit transphobia and homophobia from the Boiling Isles but also using elements of racism and anti-Semitism in the main conflict is somehow the same as her being like, I think homophobia and transphobia is bad, but I'm okay with, you know, the racism and anti-Semitism. And that's dumb. That, you have completely lost the plot. Literally, like, okay, yeah, sure. So, I that's so stupid. I'm not exact. I I don't even have like a argument prepared to dismantle that because that's just dumb. You're like, actually, no. Um, Emperor Bellows being racist. That means that you know the person who wrote him as an antagonist is also racist. Excuse me. Also, people were talking about loses hair. And how, like, you know, Luz is Afro-Latino. You know, because I think, isn't Luz Dominican? Which is, like, most Dominicans are black. As well as being, what you call, being Latin. Takes it like this is why, why it's Dre... I need to read. <laughs> I, takes like this are kind of why I stray away from the owl and frog twitter. Just overly critical to the point of going away from anything understandable. Dude, people outside of cartoon Twitter see an Owl House profile picture the same way they see anime profile pictures. Ignore the fact that I have an anime profile picture right now. <laughs> but they see it the same way, where it's like, alright, this person's about to say some shit that nobody in their right mind would actually believe. Because, like, saying that because Dana made the antagonist of her story, like, resemble an anti-Semite racist but also made a point to omit homophobia and transphobia from the world that she created somehow means that she does actually condone the actions of the antagonist is incredibly... You've completely lost the fact that those are the antagonistic views. 
like Bellows is white. Bellows is. I was about to say something that was gonna get me banned. He is a c word. Um. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like, dude, literally, why? What? What? What the fuck are y'all talking about? But yeah, the the loose thing, I I think genuinely kind of hits home for me as someone who is a. Uh, I I am mixed race myself, and it's like. I think people miss the fact that, like, when you are a mix of multiple ethnicities, certain things take over and certain things do not. There are certain, you know, like, a big thing is, like, I love seeing people ch accuse, like, mixed people and, like, brown people and, like, people who are, like, ethnically ambiguous of, like, blackfishing because they suddenly got were darker at one time compared to another, and it's like, homie. People who are, like, in between on the spectrum, between black and white, our skin tone varies a lot. Like, I, I basically, I'm, I'm nearly white passing right now. Um, I mean, I probably am white passing. I can be not at all, depending on the circumstances, depending on how much sun I get, depending on a lot of things. It's not a black and white thing, and people were saying, like, well, why is Luz's hair not curlier if she's supposed to be Afro-Latina? I don't know, dude. She has, it doesn't need to be. I've known black people where their natural hair is straight. I mean, it's still like the same like thickness and everything, but it's just straight naturally. Like it doesn't you don't need to have curly hair to be black. You don't need to have curly hair to be part black. Especially if you're mixed, it it can be possible that one side of your genetics just completely takes over that. I tend to avoid cartoons where, like, the plague, no energy for it. Um, I don't really f see it on my timeline, but I'm in a circle where it gets around to me. How does Luz become Afro? I don't know what you mean by that. Like, how is she part black? I mean, she's Dominican, and, like, the, the character... Dana based Luz off of her real-life friend, who is Dominican and Afro-Latina, and based her appearance pretty heavily on her and from my understanding is like that that's this is pretty accurate you know it's a pretty accurate translation so it's like it's kind of weird when you're like actually the person who you base this off of doesn't like fit the i don't know also the rad seacrest stuff happened this week and that was Here's the thing, is that that's like a perfect example of like, yeah, Rad kind of fucked up there, but also like him just coming out and explaining. Because, okay, so for those of you who do not know, let's see, let's see, let me pull up a picture real quick for reference. So, Kipo. Kipo is a story. It's where I can understand wanting to see characters with more visible traits of being POC, but like not having these traits isn't really out of malice you know again taking creative decisions is bad faith when you imply when you simply don't agree with them is weird my biggest thing is being you know kind of ambiguous myself it's like it's kind of weird when you're gonna be like actually this doesn't count you know or like actually like you know doing a character in this way is actually bad and actually problematic even though it's like something that people can actually like relate to you know like, one thing is, like, the, the whole thing where people were complaining at how it's kind of a trope to have, like, a young Hispanic boy in a red hoodie. And I'm like, I'm gonna be real. Every brown preteen boy I knew, including myself, did that exact same look. <laughs> so it's like, you might be like, it, and part of the thing is, like, the people complaining about it are not us. It's always, like, you know, people from the outside who are like, now, hold on, man. And it's like, it's not like that's a negative thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with wearing a red, a red fucking hoodie. But it's just one of those things where it's, like, a weird commonality. And it's like, seeing that in media isn't really a bad thing, you know? I mean, it's not like the Asians having, like, Asian girls, every Asian girl in fiction has to have, like, wild colored hair, which is, like... That's not even a commonality. It's literally just like a thing that is a weird stereotype that somehow made it in. But anyways, um, Rad Seacrest. 
the creator of Kipo. Um, a big thing about Kipo is everyone was acknowledging that the entire main cast is black. Essentially, like, pretty much the entire main cast is black. And Rad was apparently like, actually, no, like, canonically, uh, Kipo was meant to be Korean. And just Korean. Like, she was, like, made in a test tube. Because, like, it, it would be weird to, um... Like, basically, conventional breeding would be really weird if it's, like, hundreds of years, this group of people underground, like, there would be incest and shit. And he was, like, essentially, like, um... Yeah, we just designed Kipo to be Korean, which, like, I guess he brought that up because people started talking about how, like, Kipo doesn't have, like, a lot of, like, distinctly black characteristics, which is fair, you know? But his, like, his initial response was, like, well, she was never intended to be black, which obviously got people upset, and I can empathize with that. I can totally empathize with, like, yes, I understand you have a black character, you have a animated show that is predominantly there's almost entirely uh led by a black main cast and it's not even considered like a black show it's just a good show that happens to have black characters and then you find out like well actually canonically um the main character isn't biracial she's just korean and it's like i i, I can understand the disappointment in that however people started going after rad even though he acknowledged, okay, actually, no, that's that was the wrong response. Um, the fact that Kipo says black, I think that actually it does make sense that she is Blasian, and I'll acknowledge that, like, it is important that she is Blasian. And I think the main reason he was kind of hesitant, because, like, he said, like, I never confirmed that she wasn't until now. And when people would say that she's Blasian, I wouldn't correct them, because I didn't want to, like... You know, but it's kind of weird. But, like, the point is, is he took responsibility for it, and he apologized, and he was like, actually, yeah, no, like, y'all are right, like, she, yeah, she's Blasian. Like, it makes sense. Like, she, it, it makes sense that she would be. And people were still mad at him, because we're in this weird place where it's like, you can't just have a miscommunication. <laughs> it's like the fact that he even entertained that. The fact that he was even mentioning that. The fact that he would even have any hesitation has, boy i cannot talk the fact that he had any hesitation in making kipo black means that obviously he's racist obviously he's you know anti-black and it's like can we just like interact like normal people can we just like give people just a little bit of charitability like i do not benefit <laughs> nobody here benefits from just assuming like yeah right rad secret is anti-black nobody wins there the only people who win are the people who get off on harassing him and making him feel like shit about it and like bullying him online and being like actually no i'm justified because obviously he's a terrible person he could have handled that better honestly like it wasn't out of malice he owned up to and apologized but i hate twitter just encouraging people to be overly argumentative exactly like that's literally the entire thing is like it's it's such a I don't want to say it's a dumb thing, because I get it. I get where the initial, like, uh, anger and frustration came from. But, like, he apologized. Like, he he, he said the right thing. <laughs> like, he said probably the best thing you can say in that circumstance. Um, and with that, I think that we're going to transition into bringing on Cash. So wait, hold up. Where are you in my list? Where are you on my on my on my thing? Cash, I'm about to call you. And since you're in the chat, I'm gonna assume you're not AFK or anything. So I'm gonna just Hello. Yo, what's up? Hey, hey, what's up? Not much. How you doing? Uh I'm I'm generally doing alright, but uh truthfully this has been an incredibly <laughs> incredibly hectic week uh, hectic in a good way of course but still pretty hectic yeah i saw your announcement congratulations yeah thank you um for anyone in the audience who doesn't know uh i am officially a production assistant at titmouse now and i'm gonna be starting next tuesday 
Awesome. Is that I'm assuming that's remote? Oh uh, yeah, it is remote. Awesome. I have uh I don't know if you know Mackenzie Atwood, but I have a friend. She moved out to LA a couple of years ago to work for them. Um wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I don't I hope they don't know her. Um I've I've talked to Lee a couple of times and uh they, they bought her up. So I do know of Mackenzie, so Right. But but yeah, yeah. Um where I am, uh like if I like I don't know how long I'm gonna be, you know. But I would feel like if I were to do something in the office, I could because it's just like a train ride away from me. But for now, this is just remote. But mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you're in New York, right? Yeah, yeah, New York. So I'm assuming they probably have an office there as well as Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So they have the LA office, um, and the New York office is all the way in Manhattan. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about with that? Obviously, no NDA or anything. Well. I mean that's like the main thing on my mind, honestly. So I don't, I don't mind continuing talking about it if like you're, you're cool with it. I'm down talking about it. What was the, uh, what was the process like, getting into that? Um. Well, I want to say that I've been trying to grind this for a while. Um, I want to say, I think the first thing was last year they had like an open, uh. It was an open, like, recruiting meeting uh, with Ellen Sue, who I think is, like, one of the people in charge of recruiting. It was just, like, a traditional Zoom presentation, just, like, elaborating about the company, exchanging info, uh, stuff like that. And I think a couple months later, um, I had a couple people that I was able to get to know through uh, interviewing uh, on my podcast who were able to get me an interview, um, you know, regarding, like, another show. Like, I didn't get on this one. Uh, I got on to another one. Um, mm-hmm. But still, uh, the fact that, like, a like a podcast that I literally just started um, in my bedroom just was able to transition to generally, like, knowing people who – like are already in the industry, like are uh doing stuff that I'm already fans of, like wanting to help me directly. No, meant the world. You know, mm-hmm. like even if like eventually I realized that um that that position like wasn't going anywhere. And that was fine because uh they were interviewing for more like a coordinator and um an assistant's more like an entry level position. I'm like right. uh I I don't really know as much, and that's okay. But I was still proud I made it that far. Right. High school me would be, like, freaking elated. Mm-hmm. Um, for, but Just to interject yeah. a little bit, for people uh-huh. who people watching who don't know, like, most of the people who I know who have, like, managed to get into the animation industry, a production assistant is usually, like, the foot in the door. Like, Mackenzie, yeah. for example, she started off doing that, but now she has, like, a few years later, she has more of, like, an editing type position so it's a good position to have in the beginning but it's like it's definitely entry level yeah 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 definitely um at the moment uh well i start on tuesday and tuesday is supposed to be like the um i guess like new employee orientation Mm -hmm. uh you know i'm getting a monitor i'm getting a laptop uh no headset but you know it's um, that second review really was, uh, where things clicked, you know, um, I, no, I can say, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny. Uh, I remember in that second review, um, one of the questions was just like naming off, uh, like just like favorite cartoons, like off the top of my head. And mm-hmm. I, I got lucky, uh, naming, uh, okay, KO because it turns out, uh, the lime producer, uh, did help work on that and Mau Mau, so I, I like to think that helped a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if I can be real, um, and I, I don't really, I haven't really like had like a real like spot to just like talk about this, and I don't know if like anyone else can relate, but uh, I guess like my relationship with uh, this stuff is just weird because um i guess more like i i got into this like 
know, circle, uh, just wanting to, uh, make videos about cartoons. Like, I always had, um, since I was a kid, I always wanted to, like, help make cartoons. But since I was in high school, especially, you know, watching Pan, Roundtable, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, you know, I wanted to, like, actually do that stuff. Like, I knew my way about editing software, but, um, it wasn't until, like, 2020 where I just said, you know, like, fuck it you know, I'm going to do it. And I feel like once, I feel like once July hit, and ironically with my amphibia video, I was um, able to, like, put more of my own voice, you know, into the stuff, and mm -hmm. especially my podcast, which um, I'm still amazed, like, a schmuck like me was able to just get guest after guest like that. But it's always felt weird because i've kind of i don't know even since the beginning i kind of always i felt like an outsider admittedly right um i mean i still really, kind of feel like that sometimes yeah yeah you know um not really like someone who's like really well known um and i feel like when i was first starting out um people only knew me based on um you know like other people who i was affiliating with at the time which you know they're all good people but you know Right. Uh, that 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 kind of that kind of eats at you. So, um, and I think like even now it's just like I feel like the reason the the enter stuff uh really frustrated me was because, um, like I I really hope, and I I think like Kevin made a thread about this a while back too. Uh, but just from like interactions I've seen, um. I feel like the landscape between like uh cartoon makers and cartoon talkers is better these days, but you know oh, yeah. I I do still see tension and it really does frustrate me with like just misinformation or just like people thinking that, you know, just like people in this community um are just like completely you know, the right. same as like freaking the quartering or enter or whatever. Yeah. And like they've definitely you know, there there have definitely been a number of people within the industry who have been jaded by those few people. But it's also, yeah. it, it's definitely changing, I feel like, because especially since, like, I mean, to be, I don't want to, like, take credit for this, but I do feel like the roundtable did kind of start to push towards this uh, movement, towards, like, trying to review things a bit more positively, or at least, like, a bit more charitably. Because, yeah, like, I agree. Yeah, because, like, around the time that we started, like, we started making a point to make relationships with other creators and also, like, not really trying to make a relationship between, like, us and the industry. It's something that's definitely had more effort over time, but that's something that I think when we met, like, the cast of Steven Universe and we realized, like, oh, shit, like, we can actually, like, kind of create a bridge between the industry and like the creators just through like not being entirely hostile towards the people who make shows and it's right. something that uh when i did meet dana terrace she specifically like told us um that like we like something that she noticed when she watched our videos was like there was a difference between like us and the people who like just hate on cartoons and the creators for the sake of doing it and like she mentioned that like she felt like we were a lot more thoughtful and like when we did say negative things it was coming from like a more uh like a better place and like that meant yeah. a lot but also like there are still people where it's like y you still see it on twitter sometimes like people just be like oh yeah all these fucking cartoon youtubers just talking about these shows so they can make money and it's like it sucks that people are out there still in the industry who feel that way but it's definitely yeah. starting to change, which is really good. Yeah. You know, I can I can even speak from personal experience, uh, you know, surrounding that. And I'll be honest, um, again, no shade, but I feel like when you have that chip on your shoulder, when you feel like, you know, you're going to be looked down on right. uh, for getting your start, like making videos about cartoons and... You know, you're kind of overshadowed where, like, your peers are just, like, more well-known than you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it does suck. Yeah. But I feel like now, even today, when I, 
when I made that post, you know, I was, you know, like in many ways, like I was uh, in incredibly um, elated uh, because I felt like it was a peak. It felt like, you know, the grinding that I've been doing, you know, since 2020, it, it paid off, you know, especially since, I don't know, uh, I, I've been trying to get like a quote unquote normal job for some sort of income. It never happened. And mm -hmm. maybe this was a sign, but just like checking my notifications, it was like, it, you know, it was great, but also weird because like a lot of people who, um, I was, you know, already fans of, or people who I already knew of, you know, they were following me. You know, I had like people who were working on like, big stuff like dming me following me you know uh even people who i may be working with mm -hmm. um hell um i i ended up making a really big um well combined it's 45 minutes um a really big uh retrospective review of magic girl friendship squad uh with uh with a lot of people um, you know, including Barrett's Joe among like others mm -hmm. and, and Jared who did my icon. But while admittedly it tanked in views, which did kind of sting as, you know, I literally spent a year on it. Yeah. Um, it literally got me not only to talk directly to two uh crew members who worked on that show, uh, one of which who is at Titmouse and you know was just able to generally give me uh some some really good advice it was able to like call my jitters during uh you know right before my first interview um apparently they're literally right in my area and it's like realistic where i can meet up with them mm -hmm. which is nuts because you know normally everyone's in la and you know um i i don't really know like what my path is gonna be but i do want to think that um, I can still, I don't have to, like, forget my roots or, you know, like, pretend I was, like, never a, uh, cartoon reviewer. Because, like, I still want to, uh, I still want to talk about this stuff. I still want to interview people on my podcast. I want to make videos on non, uh, stuff, you know, because I take, uh, making videos seriously as a way of, like, expressing myself and views, but... I also had like a very similar view on making stuff to what you and Roundtable were doing, where it's like, you know, not being antagonistic and, you know, just like actually trying to like explain and like argue and like better faith. Right. You know, um, and, and I will, and this will be my final point, um, before I can like leave talk. I'm sorry for over talking. No, nah, it's uh, fine. I, I like it to some degree when guests just come on and they're just ready to talk because it makes my oh. job easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, and th this is a, uh, it's sort of embarrassing uh, to admit live, uh, but my, my biggest influence, uh, I think since I was like in eighth grade um, has to be, has to be Pam, like without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, just because, um, not only, like, just because of, like, not only, like, um, many of our, like, established, like, you know, common interests and just, like, general aesthetic and stuff, um, but just because, like, I always got the idea of, like, no matter, like, how big he grows up, he's still, like, you know, the everyman, you know, mm -hmm. like, you, you still, you literally see, like, everything he does, you know, he, like, puts, like, his all into and i you know from like editing to drawing whatever and i found that like highly admirable you know there have been <laughs> there have been literal times where i'm just going back on like old videos and it's like uh hearing him talk about like the stress of like uh trying to like get a portfolio together or you know stuff like that or like editing and like five in the morning it's like oh shit this is like this is actually me now Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I know, uh, he, he doesn't know I exist. Like, it would be, it would be fine, uh, if I could, like, finally, like, talk to someone who I, I personally consider, um, as big as an influence on me as, like, someone like E&JQ, Rebecca Sugar, mm -hmm. but I'm not 
the last thing I want to do, especially now that I am a creator, is to look like a like a stalker or anything like that. But I do generally think that he is a you know really cool guy, and I wouldn't really be in this position uh, without him. And I I don't want to like hide that. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, Pan is kind of the guy I had in mind when I was like kind of hesitant to be like the round table is the reason why like that relationship kind of uh between the industry and cartoon online critics got better because pan Mm -hmm. pan is probably the original before us like we definitely started to uh change the way that the landscape of cartoon criticism on youtube was but pan was definitely like i mean pan has kind of like an edgy like dirtbag sense of humor so i feel like that kind of got lost in kind of the rest of like the super negative stuff but like he never really has like just unapologetically like ripped into a cartoon like he's always been like fair and he's also like like that the whole like pizza party podcast like their whole team and like improving our relationship with them and getting closer to them is part of the reason why a lot of the industry connections we have now exist like with the round table like katrin is one example where it's like i don't think we would even know her if it wasn't for uh that common like that mutual relationship between her and the pizza party podcast and then we met her through there yeah i literally oh god i literally like remember you know just like listening to that episode when it first came out that that's how that's how i know her and Mm -hmm. uh, now we're mutuals you know so (laughs) yeah Katrin is awesome, by the way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she worked on uh, my friend Skyward Wings pilot that he made, and like afterwards, like he said, like he had he is every time I brought her up around him, he has so many positive things to say about her, and like she is, like she has done so much like cool stuff, and she's still very grounded as a person, and it's really cool. Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely respect that. Um, I I will say this though, when it comes to, like the topic of like establishing relationships, um, you know, well, I I feel this um, in general with uh just reaching out to like their content creators, um, I'm gonna feel this a lot more with the industry people, um, but you know, in both aspects, you know, I'm, you know. There are people who, um, like, enjoy my presence and, you know, people who, like, literally have done, like, huge things, uh, like, to help me. Um, but I still get, like, really anxious and I don't really tend to, like, talk to them uh, unless, like, I absolutely need to. Because, like, I still really do fear that I would, like, come off as, like... No, like a, a fanboy or whatever, or someone who's just trying to like, you know, score a bunch of like follows from these people. But mm-hmm. you know, I'm just trying to be nice. Like I got someone, um, I got someone like following me uh recently. Um, and all I did was uh help her set up uh some some emulation stuff uh because she streams uh VTuber stuff on the side and she followed mm-hmm. me back. And I was like, shit, that's cool, <laughs> but like I, I would have done that anyway. Like, I just like helping people, you know. Um, I'm hoping once I actually like start working, you know, my brain can actually accept that, like, hey, I'm in this industry now. Uh, so I can get rid of those jitters and like talk to people more casually and maybe reach out to uh, more bigger people, mm-hmm. um, for my podcast too. Cause I do want to branch out, um, while. Well, there definitely is like a dream list, and I also do wanna, you know, uplift like friends and like a uh, smaller, uh, kind of creators as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also just like a general dream list of people who I want to talk to, um, who aren't necessarily like animation related, and it's like you know, it's my podcast. I can, I can do whatever. Yeah. Um, at the moment, the only, the only person that I could. I could say that fits that mold is uh David Kimball, who um is is more in the Smash community. Um he you know, he's helped develop like a 
every notable mod. Um, he does like content based on melee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and <sighs> this is admittedly like a really crazy video idea that I don't know if I'm gonna get to develop. Um, but as someone who got into both of those scenes, uh, just like making videos, taking art seriously, and a uh, competitive Smash, um. I feel like, you know, if you've, like, seen that Emblem and Hungrybox video, you know, uh, there's something about just, like, the general idea of, like, dedication, self-improvement, um, and then, like, just course correcting, like, even if it doesn't work out, you know, just, like, dealing with obstacles that are in your way when you're trying to achieve something that's been your life's goal. Right. Um, that I can see in, um just both like this aspect of the gaming and like art and i i do have like three pages of like already an outline that i want to explore one day because like just like hearing uh even players just like talk about like anxieties about like just like managing like work life you know like upholding the content creation angle and doing their main thing which is already hard on a regular basis you know algorithms yep. you know all this stuff you know it, it you know it's it's a struggle you know, like the top players have to deal with it, artists have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, you and me have to deal with it, considering right. that you no, know, both our shows are pretty much a one person shows that we're mm -hmm. just like doing to express ourselves. Um, there's just like so many angles. I'd love to like uh link you a script after this if you're ever interested. Mm -hmm. Um, but but yeah, um going forward, I don't know how much time I'm gonna have and I think that maybe like working will help me like get the passion to just like do videos like more of a hobby instead of like a job obligation or whatever mm -hmm. but i'm i'm really i'm actually really hopeful um and like i said earlier i don't really want to um hide um the fact that i like the cartoon reviews or whatever i have a lot of aspects to me as a person and i I guess like just going forward, I hope that um people in general can just like accept that. And I feel like everyone that's I feel like that's the goal of like all content creators basically, just to accept each other like holistically. Yeah. And that's all I can say. <laughs> Sorry for rambling again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just really passionate about uh, topics like this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I part of it too like the main thing that's kind of hard to deal with, first of all, thank you, Art Coffee, for the follow. Um one thing that's really hard to deal with as a creator, especially, like, at our level, is, like, you have to accept that merit does not always equal success. Mm -hmm. And that's really difficult to deal with because you realize, like, okay, I could work really – I could do what you did and, like, work for a year on a video that I'm really passionate about or even, like, a video series and put a ton of love into it, have it be – like, let's be honest, that video is probably better than, like, a lot of video essays out there on YouTube that have, like, a lot more views, but it might just not do that great. And it's literally, yeah. that's just the nature of the beast. And it's something where part of the thing with, like, uh, probably, like, the best example of this is, like, Dan Olson had that NFT video just blow up this past yeah. year. I've been watching Dan Olson since, like, 2016. And he has never been, like, a super mainstream, like, YouTuber like that. Like, he's... I think the thing that he was known for most is he's friends with Lindsay Ellis. Mm -hmm. And, like, all of his videos get, like, maybe... They, they would be lucky to get, like, over 100k. And I was always like, you know, this dude is, like, probably the best, like, at the video essay format of anyone on YouTube. But, like, there aren't that many people who watch him. And then it's, like four or five years later, he has a video that just is, like, the biggest thing on YouTube. So it's something where it's, like... And there's, like, a ton of examples like that, where it's, like... It does kind of suck when you're, like, okay, I feel like I'm mostly just known for, you know, having friends or people who I'm affiliated with who are more popular than me, but sometimes it's, like... When you look around at, like, the journeys of a lot of people who blow up, you have to realize that, like that's sometimes just how it goes because like there are sometimes people who literally just grind on youtube for years and they don't blow up until like much later and i think it is kind yeah. of a thing where it's like you just 
if you, that's really what you want to do if you really just want to like stick to youtube then like you kind of gotta tough that out but like there is a weird mentality around like putting all your bag all your eggs into the one basket that you want mm -hmm. and i think that like doing what you're doing right now where it's like getting an actual like industry job is really is for a lot of people sometimes the better route because it's like if you're not going to be sustained by like because th the cold hard truth is sometimes like with youtube it's just not gonna provide what you need as an adult to like a job to provide like that, yeah. that's just the thing that kind of sucks is like you can be good at it you can be consistent with it and sometimes it's just not going to work out and you need to like diversify your portfolio and like the biggest thing about youtube is like it is ultimately just a platform for uh for being creative and yeah. for a lot of people they want to just be a youtuber but you need like something to build that off of you so like getting an actual job like that which even though it's like still in the field that you want to do and still in like uh the industry that you want to be in sometimes doing that is going to do so much more and give you so much more experience to make your uh just evolve your youtube content or it might just lead you in a completely different direction that's better for you and also like there are like a there is like mackenzie who used to do youtube and also like uh rebecca rebecca rose who i've known for years because she was on youtube and is now uh i think she's a pa on owl house now yeah yeah she actually uh liked my announcement post which uh really surprised me actually yeah so it's like there are examples now of like people from our side of youtube like branching off into like actual industry jobs which is really cool so it's like there is starting to become a precedent of that so i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think that's really awesome to see someone like you who like honestly like your stuff on youtube and like a lot of your content wasn't getting the attention it deserves and now it's like you're not really like not selling out but you're getting a it's allowed you a path towards something that's actually going to probably benefit you more yeah like um using using youtube like to get to this spot was always like the goal but i didn't want to like you know cheapen out you know like i still um put like passion uh into each of my videos and yeah of um, course i want to say like going forward with my amphibia video but especially um like especially like my nft video which um like as as of now i think that's the most like ambitious thing uh that i edited like i i, <laughs> I literally um ended up like putting like after effects like under my belt just because i knew that somehow it would like come in handy uh if i go industry so i'm like mm -hmm. might as well experiment with this stuff now yeah um and it didn't really blow up but you know like i'm i'm still proud of that you know i'm still proud of all the guests that i was able to get on my podcast and i a lot of times like people just like came to me like for that summer i was pretty wiped but you know I, I was happy that like people were just like coming in just like back to back to back and people were genuinely like interested in you know just like engaging in conversation mm -hmm. you know and and i feel like um i feel like a couple of these people like maybe i could consider friends i mean i don't want to sell anything of course um but i think that's also just going to be like a like an iffy thing uh going forward because like i've realized that um sub counts follow counts aren't really an indicative like measure of uh like my personal level of like where i uh would want to be you right know? uh so like yeah it's cool um that i have like certain people following me or subscribe to me but i know that that in of itself i can still be proud of that I know that in of itself doesn't make me a better artist or video creator. Yeah. And there I are, also... There are amazing artists who have, like, no followers compared to artists that are kind of mediocre who have a ton of followers. Yeah, definitely. 
and it's also why um like i don't know if like people still have uh this view with uh content creators but it's also why um i just want to like reach out and just like you know just like befriend people mm -hmm. you know and i feel like maybe people have like a cynical perspective just like genuine niceness online uh what do you think it's like there's no way like someone can be like that unless they're trying to like use people or just like be be a shithead or whatever right but genuinely it's like i don't i don't really care like how much uh how much of a follower count like people have like i i just like would want to be friends with someone just because like uh i think it would be cool mm -hmm. you know but i admittedly like it does uh like it does get scary because i don't i don't want to appear like a cloud chaser or anything and like i'm glad uh i'm in the position i am like i i'll be honest like i watch a bunch of clips to, uh, <laughs> sorry tongue tied <laughs> um <laughs> i'll be honest i watch a bunch of a uh, crystal clear in high school so high school me would be super happy that i'm even in this position right now mm -hmm. you know like i don't really i don't really like see people with like their their follower counts or whatever i just feel like hey you're a person i'm person you know like that's whatever like obviously i don't want to like just freaking like i don't like pans dms or whatever but you know i feel like again just like going forward um you know it really is about like putting yourself out there which is why uh you know you and i like admire like rts you know for just like doing that and like putting herself out there for for last week's show yeah um because like she like from my conversation with her she was never uh into that like system herself either you know she uh was really focused on just like having her opinion uh working with people um just like doing what she can um to just like express that it was just a highly admirable trait and i, I really think she's like popping off and it's well deserved mm -hmm. um and again just like not to really talk in circles but i i don't want to um forget my roots um i want to like try to uh uplift um as many people uh as i can because like i know i have like a lot of friends um across like many different circles because like i'm a multifaceted person i'm not just cartoon man you know mm -hmm. um and i feel like with videos or podcasts like i i won't like quit until like i can like help uplift like as many people as i can for and, sure you know yeah that's like, like part of my thing of this whole show too is like yeah there are, yeah there are honestly people who like there are a few people who I've, like, wanted to ask on, but I, like, have intentionally been, like, actually, I want to wait until, like, I get a bit more of a following here, because I'm, like, there there are a few people who I follow where I'm, like, dude, it is absolutely insane, the content that you make for, like, so few people, and I'm, like, I want to expose, like, Wasp Ranger is one example, like, I've, con oh. I've thought about, no. like, yo, I should hit him up to be on the show, but I'm, like, I want to get to a point where it's, like, if I have him on the show, it can actually, like, impact his viewership because, like, he deserves it. Like, the fact that he oh, makes incredible. the videos he does and gets the views he does is absolutely, like, insane. Yeah, I'm speaking of someone who um had him on my podcast, and that's, like, that's, like, one of my favorite episodes. Like, he genuinely, like, a, yeah. an amazing dude, honestly. Just, like, oh, my God. Yeah, he has such, like, a genuine passion for everything he talks about, too yeah like oh man and um and i'll also say like uh his friend nikki uh you know they do like well they don't like currently do like youtube analysis anymore um they're more doing like their their podcast like going to feed it mm -hmm. uh which, which is also good um but i always like found it like you know very sweet because um, just like going through their backlog of just like uh tokusatsu analysis a lot of it was like really good and n just not saying like the opinions that um like you normally heard uh mm -hmm. like within this like niche of a niche you know and i really respected that um and you know it sucks but yeah you know like 
obviously like they're they're happy doing what they're um doing now, which I'm I'm definitely happy for. Um ironically, um another another year long video uh I've been working on was um an analysis of on my own of a Tokusatsu show, which you know, like that that's gonna be a, a past project in itself. And I don't know, just like think about it, I feel like I feel like that's also something I've noticed when it comes to, like, just talking about certain nerdy media, um, like, toku cartoons, anime, whatever, where it's, like, you can have, like, people who generally are saying, like, a lot of, like, really good opinions, but it's either the algorithm just buries them or, you know, they're only known in, like, their own, like, little, uh, like, micro niche or whatever. Right. Like, in, like... Toku YouTube, you know, like, this person's, like, pretty big, but in, in the Grand Central, you know, uh, this person is, you know, really small. And it really sucks in general when you have, like, creators with, like, a lot of potential um, that could have, like, broad appeal. And, you know, hopefully, for me, uh, that's what I want to do on YouTube. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, with Ross Scott, who made a Freeman's Mind, and, you know, a lot of uh, Lama Shinman stuff like that. I don't think I am. Um, okay, no, nah, that's cool. But basically, he's gotten to a point where he could just basically talk about, like, anything. You know, I feel like that's when you've kind of made it as a creator, mm -hmm. when you can, like, spend, like, an hour just, like, talking about, like, uh, computer desktop interfaces, you know, in such a way that, like, you you just, like, completely get your audience. Like, you have, like... A niche audience but it's a big audience at the same time who are just like down for like whatever you do whatever you say right um and i think that's like more valuable than just like having like a huge number but then only like a specific thing you do like everything else no matter the quality you know they just like drop off you know and obviously algorithms youtube studio just like hammer that in even more yeah um <laughs> but yeah i know uh there's definitely a balance between like uh, appeasing the algorithm and uh, expressing yourself, but hopefully, you know, people can you know still like put their souls in YouTube videos because like, a lot of people say that, you know, um, like old YouTube is dead, you know, and I, well, data wise, yes, but I still think that generally, like, no matter what you're doing online, you know, as long as you want to express yourself, uh, I think it's all possible. That's something that I want to do, um, and hopefully, uh, the way Pan inspired a uh, weirdo loner high school me. Um, I I feel like no matter what I do, I can like inspire someone who's younger than me, like ten years later, to just like do whatever. That's really my goal at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. And that's also like a video I've been planning to make for Sigma Mail. It's just like the difference between like. Was a good video versus was a good YouTube video, because it feels right. like, because like part of the thing is like especially when you look at a lot of people who give advice and like a lot of people who are like on the top talking about like how to get big on YouTube, it's usually like, well, if a video is good, it'll just naturally, you know, of course it's gonna do well, but it's like their idea of a good video is like it hits like all these certain points that are like tailor made to make a video go viral, where it's like within like this point in the video you do a call to action or like whatever like stuff like that and it's like okay this is good and like if you tailor your videos towards this it will probably help them perform more but it's like where is the creativity at that point like it's yeah, very well yeah it's very calculated at that point and even if it's something that you're like you're really passionate about like at what point do you show that passion between like all of the very careful technical steps that you're taking to make sure the video does well right right and also like something that uh internally of the round table that we've talked about is like what you were talking about where it's like we we're like the biggest like animation channel or like one of the biggest animation channels but it's like okay like with a million subscribers we're not very known across youtube like how do we get into the greater sea that is youtube and you know expand our reach and bring an even bigger audience to where we can talk about different things you know yeah. so it, it's definitely it, it's all a thing for sure 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, something that I've realized is that, like, whether it's for you or your audience, um, sometimes the stuff that doesn't do well is the stuff that, like, you might be most proud of. Like, right. My my Amphibia video, uh, my Pete and Pete video, Magical Friendship Squad, you know, those are the videos that I feel most proud of. But, you know, I did, like, try to experiment with, uh, like, more more topical, like, commentary-ish uh, videos. And, you know, I still try to, like, put my soul into them as much as I could. Um, I think my 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 Pibby video was, like, the fastest turnaround um, that I had for video, but the soul was just not in there. And I'm like, no no shade to people who do this stuff, but I could uh, never do this stuff. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, uh, from you, um, I think it was like your video. Uh, for, forgive me if I'm describing this wrong, or whatever. Um, but I, I think I'm pretty sure it had something to do with like uh, left and na- leftist analysis of SpongeBob, if I remember correctly. Like right. I remember the video. Yeah, that's like the immediate thing. Um, that I associate you with, and I'm just like, oh, okay, so this dude is just like cool in general you mm-hmm. know like i already know it you know cool from round table whatever but you know i'll like everyone uh i i honestly appreciate more when you know like people have like their own like personal sense of no like no own for you know like obviously you guys do general cartoon news no that's great no but a topic like that is just like a tom topic no, like no yeah. one else is just like make that no, and again, that's like something I respect. It's you no, know, it's refreshing, you know. So, you know, I, I just like, again, I, I'm sorry. Um, I feel like, uh, I feel like when sometimes when people hear this stuff, you know, people might immediately assume like, oh, they're just trying to be kiss ass. But no, like I genuinely, uh, think you're cool and like I like your stuff, you know. So, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. I mean, that's one of the videos where people know me from, for sure. But that's, I feel like that's one of the few videos where it's like, I'm actually really proud of how it came out. And it's also managed to have that effect. Because, like, the Rose Quartz, I mean, I am I was proud of the Rose Quartz video when I made it. But looking back on it, the fact that I'm like, this is really what a bunch of people know me for? Like, this is not my best work by far. And I feel like right. a lot of my best videos are like, the videos that get like thirty thousand views and never really leave the bubble of the round table. Yeah. So that's that that's definitely a hard thing to kinda that that can be demotivating when it's like you genuinely especially when like all the people who watch a video are like, yo, this was so good and then like the view count doesn't reflect it. It's like, damn. Like it, it it's really the yeah. the like the merit is there, but like the the YouTube gods have not acknowledged it. Yeah, like, we're always, like, taught in life that, you know, if you, like, put, like, put in, like, all this effort that eventually will pay off, but, you know, sometimes, like, in YouTube or just in general, like, the internet with, like, everything being more algorithm-driven, sometimes it won't pay off, and, you know, for people who, like, aren't really in the know, they might think you're just bitching, you know, but right, a lot of time it is valid because it generally is out of your control. Yeah, you know, like there's nothing you can do to like force it. Like, it's not a thing that you can work for, really. Right. Like you can. It's kind of just gambling. It's like the more you spin the wheel, the more you have a chance at making a jackpot. But like, you can't make a jackpot happen. Yeah, and you know, if like if you end up like tailoring like content or art or whatever, um, towards you know getting hits, you know that's. No, that's when the the soul goes away. And like I already said, no, like I really respect soul in creations, even if they don't pop off, you know, because that's what I personally still feel proud of. Like I can like look back and say, oh, I had like uh, like four to five like WP animation people like on my Rick and Dick podcast, you know, I got like um, 5K views, 10K views on my amphibian analysis, you know. I'll, I like hold that way more than me making a a Pibby analysis video in a day and that getting like seventy k like 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever, you know? That's the crazy thing, too, is, like, I think of, like, some of the videos where it's just, like, I made it in a day. Like, literally, I just, like, recorded it, gave it to our editor, it went up, like, the same day, and it managed to get, like, 100,000 views, and that's, like, I put a ton of work, like, I put a month into, like, writing a video, and then I shoot it, and then I, like, put all this time into editing it, and that gets, like, 20k views, and it's, like, ridiculous. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I think it's about time to wrap it up. Shout out, wh what do you want to shout out? Alright, um, so, first off, um, if you do want to check out my videos, um, you can check me out on YouTube, uh, that is K-A-S-H, uh, C-A-S-H, um, I have a podcast, um, the Cash Cast, uh, so that's anchor.fm slash K-A-S-H, uh, C-A-S-T, um, I don't know when it's gonna be out, but, um, I do have a second interview with, um, Marika Cohen, who was another, um, crew member on a uh, magical friendship squad. So whenever that's out on YouTube and streaming platforms, um, that'll be out there. Um, I, I don't know when or how much I'm going to be doing videos. Um, so if you were to follow, uh, my Twitter, um, I'd rather do the art account. That's K A S H E D, uh, A R T art. Um, like, when I eventually, like, do make another video, I'll dust off the main account. But you could just follow me there. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. It was a blast. I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to wrap up the show. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. You take care. All right. See ya. Oh, shit. I hung up a little fast. Okay. Sorry, Cash. Anyways, you can... I post... All right. Oh, my God. It's, it's the end of the show. <laughs> This is the end of the show. My brain just was like, all right, you did it. The end. All right. Anyways, outro. Everyone check out Cash. They're awesome. Uh, this is their uh, account that they mentioned. And also their announcement post about them getting with Titmouse, which is an awesome thing. Glad to see them doing it. And also, that's not how you do that. Also, follow me on Twitter at TommyPQM, and also check out Sugma Mail. I already mentioned the fact that I'm going to be uh, probably cooling off with doing the, the edited videos of the stuff from the stream and probably posting more of that on this channel where I post the full VODs. And also check out the roundtable. Check out Toon Drip. Check out all that stuff. I'm incredibly tired. I already mentioned at the beginning of the show. This has been a weird week for me. And uh, thank you all so much for coming out. Glad to see you all in the chat. Glad to see everyone enjoying the show. We got two weeks left. I don't have a guest for next week right now unless someone hits me up for it. And uh, yes. All right. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to before my brain just completely gives up on me. Thank you all so much for coming out. And I'll see you next week.